there's a capacitor charging up and there's a capacitor discharging. Now what we want to have a look at when we play around with capacitors is some of the properties of the capacitor and here we've got a simple capacitor and it's actually quite a large capacitor and something we want to do really to start with is to build a capacitor circuit to set this up. <laughs> A capacitor circuit like this is basically twofold. There's a charging circuit where the electricity flows through here. We've got a bulb to give us a measure of how this capacitor is going. And you wouldn't normally use this, but we're doing this for your benefit so you can see what's happening. The capacitor then charges up and this is the circuit. We can then, here we go. The bulb starts off bright, it gets dimmer and dimmer as basically electricity is flowing through here and basically needs more and more volts to go into this capacitor to charge it up. Then on the other side we've got a discharging circuit which will run round the other way and when I release the switch here, making the circuit, the electrons will flow round this way completing this circuit and as I do so the bulb starts off really brightly and then as we run out of charge on this capacitor this gets dimmer and dimmer. Well that's okay but we want to really see more what's going on so I've got an oscilloscope and we can look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this across the bulb to give us some sort of idea of what's going on so I've put a probe across this bulb on the discharging circuit. It's going to be the blue one. And I'm going to put another one on the other circuit, the charging circuit. This one is going to be our yellow one. And hopefully they're not too much in the way. So if we look at the oscilloscope, when I now start charging... The yellow one here starts charging and we can see its voltage, which is what we're measuring, gets less and less and less. And although the bulb has gone out, it was still charging. Now we're going to discharge it. Watch the blue line. So as I switch this one on, the bulb comes on very brightly, but it goes dim quite quickly and we can see the voltage on the oscilloscope dropping and it drops back to zero. So this is our capacitor. Now what's going on? Why is it doing this? And to do this we need to have a look at really what a capacitor looks like. And I've got here a sort of demonstration capacitor that we can have a look at. It's got a circular plate. And in fact, it's got two of those circular plates and we can put them close together. We can put in a piece of paper, wax or something else between them to insulate them better. So we can actually push the plates really quite close together, but so they're not touching. There are experiments we can do by changing the distance, which is what this is designed for. So let's suppose we make one of these plates positive and the other one negative. As I charge the capacitor, electrons arrive on this plate and electrons are removed from this plate. Initially, we get lots, but as this plate fills up with electrons, it gets harder and harder to get them in. We can see this as I flick the switch. As I flick the switch, lots of electrons are getting on there, the voltage is very high, but then it gets more and more difficult. And so we're seeing the voltage going down in the bulb because the voltage is going up in the capacitor because the total voltage on this circuit is 12 volts. 
and if I reduce the voltage in the bulb then it means the voltage across the capacitor has increased. Conversely when we discharge the capacitor it's now the plates here are now absolutely full of charge we can't get any more on them so when we release the circuit by completing the circuit closing the switch the electrons on this side can quickly leave and run around if you like to the other side completing the circuit let's see that as I flick the switch, if we watch the blue line on the oscilloscope, we are seeing the voltage in the bulb start very high and then get dimmer and dimmer. This is because we've got, again, the same potential difference here and it's requiring more and more to remove those electrons. So our bulb here starts off bright when there are lots of electrons flowing around the circuit and it gets dimmer as we start to run out of electrons and although the bulb will go out we can still see the capacitor working because the bulb has only got an operating voltage of so many volts but we can see more. So we can see the oscilloscope is set here to 20 volts. I've got 12 volts in the circuit. So we are getting our voltage going down and down and down in the bulb. The bulb's gone out, but the line is still continuing. Let's now discharge. The bulb's bright and it's going dim and it bulb is now out but you can see the capacitor trace here the voltage is getting lower and lower even though the bulbs out because the bulb and the capacitor are basically quite different beasts the bulb will only light if there's enough voltage through it whereas the capacitor is now leaking stuff from one plate going around the circuit to the other completing the circuit. To demonstrate this capacitor can act like a battery let's try it again. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this is fully discharged and what I'm now going to do is let's charge up this capacitor. So our light's going to light up very brightly get dimmer as this capacitor gets charged. Now it's charging. I'm going to build a new circuit. So I'm just going to take out everything here and rather than having a drone I'm going to have really just a simple bulb. I'm going to put in a switch and let's take this out of the circuit and plonk it into a new circuit. Nothing's going to happen until I complete the circuit and there my capacitor is actually working like a battery making the light go and by now it's just about run out of its charge moving around the circuit. So what can we use a capacitor for? Well they're widely used as replacement batteries nowadays. You might have some AirPods or you might have a drone. Now batteries are typically quite heavy beasts but capacitors are much lighter and they charge up quite quickly. To charge a battery might take several hours but it might not take such a long time to charge a capacitor. So Imagine this is my battery for my drone, this capacitor. I can charge it from the mains. It charges and it's keeping charging. And now this is basically 
fully charged, I can then use my AirPods or my drone, whatever this capacitor is now controlling. And when I want to use it, then we now can take it out, put it into another machine, and then I can flick the switch and electricity will flow from this capacitor much like a battery supplying electricity to the device we want to power. In this circuit, I haven't done anything with resistors. I've just done it as a bare bones system. But in real life, if we place a big resistor inside this circuit, it can slow down the flow. And so we can actually get energy out of the capacitor for longer. There we are. So a simple experiment to show you what you can do and what a capacitor looks like. One last thing. If we look at the charging, you'll see that the charging starts off very quickly and then gradually goes down and gets slower and slower and slower. This is an exponential relationship where QT, our charging is the original charge, Q0, times a natural logarithm, E, to the power of minus T over RC. And this RC, the resistance times the capacitance, is our time constant. And it works exactly the same when we discharge. And for our charge, it's going to be Q. But for our voltage here, we've got Vt equals V0 times E to the minus T over RC.